and we are back and yes Rosie Barbara and Rosie yes water but we are back today is Sunday December the 29th this was chat number 154 and it was titled how to survive and thrive throughout the holidays but the extra credit portion I have decided to copy Casey so if she's here she's gonna know oh no it is not camp no no i'm sorry susie wants to know what my shirt says it is camp nowhere and still nobody has guessed that i've seen anyway nobody has guessed what this is from um there's nothing weight watchers related on here at all nothing at all other than i love this and casey knows casey knows what this is about okay but anyway so and thank you loretta um so in part two in our extra credit I have decided to copy Casey. She is doing for her, um, for her 2020, she is doing on her booktube channel, which is Bohan and Babel. So if any of you are also book lovers, oh, and Michelle, it's not a movie, but you're super close. Um, but if any of you are book lovers um, and you are interested in watching booktubers, um, watching people talk about books, Casey can hook you up. So her, her channel is called Bohan and Babbles. But what she is doing for 2020, first of all, she is the world's best planner. Like she already knows, she already knows what vlog she's doing, what video she's doing for like the next, I don't even know how many weeks it is. But I am copying her in the A, I'm actually going to list what we are going to be talking about for the next few weeks so that I know ahead of time instead of like two days before what we're talking about or doing, whether it's going to be cooking something or testing something or trying out somebody else's recipe, which I want to do a lot of those this year. Um, but I'm going to make a list of what we're going to be talking about. If you have any ideas for things that you want me to talk about this year, um, please let me know. We already had somebody request that we talk about the Aaptive um, portion of your um, WW app and about the Headspace um, portion. So I already had those written down and I'm going to put a date next to them so we know when we are doing them. And I'm going to try and start listing those ahead of time so that you all will know, oh, you know, this is a week that I definitely want to attend um, or this is a week that, yeah, I already know about that. Hopefully, y'all will want to attend every week, but, you know, there might be some weeks that you think, eh, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, I already know about that one, or, yeah, I definitely need to write that down because that's a date that I don't want to miss or that I want to invite, you know, some friends to. Okay, so the reason I'm copying Casey, what she is doing for her first few weeks um, on her vlog, and it's just Bohan and Babbles on YouTube, is she's going to go back and look at um, books that she, um, no, Kathy, nope. She's going to go back and look at books that she read over the last decade. So it was super cute. She posted um, some pictures for this first one of her 10 years ago, um, you know, and then what book she was reading. Anyway, it was it was super cute. So we're not. I'm sorry. Vicki wants to know if the dip is better with fresh chicken or the canned chicken. I personally think it's better with the canned chicken. And Betty's exactly right. Yes, Betty, it is from Stranger Things, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But Casey got me this for Christmas, and I love this shirt, and I love ring tees. Okay, so Casey is, she's going back and talking about this last decade. So I thought that it would be super fun, super fun. And yes, I'm sorry, I think the canned chicken is better for the dip, Vicky. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Okay, so that means everybody who was here with us during the exercise um, video last year, you have to either do push-ups, I think it's push-ups or sit-ups when I get distracted. Anyway, so, or sidetracked. So, um, I thought that we would go back. This is a new decade. It is 2020. It's going to be 10 years before I get to say, it's going to be a new decade. It's going to be 10 years, and hopefully we will all still be here doing this in 10 years, but it will be 10 years before I can say that it's a new decade, and I thought, you know, this seems like a really fun idea to go back and review some things. So not only are we going to review the last decade, we're going to spend the next couple of weeks leading up into um, the Super Bowl because the week before the Super Bowl, we're going to be hard and heavy on WW friendly snack things. Okay, so the week before the Super Bowl, it's going to be all about WW friendly snack things. But leading up to that, I thought it would be super fun to go back into the vault and review um, WW from the beginning. Did you know it has been almost six decades since Gene Needich developed, introduced, started, created Weight Watchers in her in her basement? 
almost six decades almost six decades so i thought it would be super fun to go back you know and again you know go back in the vault and look at this just to see how much it's changed some of the things you're going to go wow that sounds exactly like it is now and some of the things you're going to go wow i'm so glad that we are not on that same program so some of these are really really funny really hilarious First thing I need to know, if you are live with us here tonight, is there anybody, do we have anybody live with us here tonight that joined Weight Watchers in the 1960s? Is there anybody? Um, just give me a shout out, raise your hand. If there's anybody who's watching On Demand later, oh, Vicki got to see her when she was in junior high school. That's awesome. Um, is, but if you're watching this later on demand, just... Um, you know, just, you know, go ahead and tell me, but is there anybody who joined in the 60s? Pam, seriously, you joined in the 60s. That is awesome. That is so cool. Michelle's mom, you know, was a Weight Watchers member in the 60s. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, I didn't know. What? Vicki, you, Vicki, you joined in the 60s? Sandra was in the 60s? What year? Kathy joined in the late 70s. Yeah, we're going to go decade by decade. So this week, we'll probably just cover the beginning, you know, like the 60s, like, you know, when it all started. And then we'll spend the next two weeks, um, you know, going over some lumps of time. Um, but so what we're going to talk about first is how this all started. So and Myra was in the early 70s. Wow, Trish was 12 years old when she's, that's awesome. That is so awesome. And Barbara's, Barbara's mom did it in the early 70s. My mom did it in the 70s too. And I think she got Lifetime in like 1978 or something. I'm gonna have to go back and find her pen. Okay, and Tag still has a ton of the stuff and she didn't throw out much. What? That is so awesome. She's gonna have to go, she's gonna go back and look through it. Okay, so the original program, I would say in was 1969. That's, I was two, I was two years old. Okay, so the original program, Gene Needich in the 1960s, um, had, like all of us, like all of us, she had done diets, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, wasn't having much success. And she thought, you know, this is crazy. This is crazy. When Vicky says five fish, three beef, and one liver. Ugh, ugh. Okay, she was like, this is crazy. You know, I, I'm trying to do this by myself. I keep having a little bit of success, and then I keep, you know, and then I keep failing, you know, because I'm trying to do this by myself. So she got a group of friends together um, in the 60s, and she um, got them together in her basement, and she started having a meeting. So, so this was based around, it was developed, um, it was based around a diet that had been developed by the New York City Department of Health, the New York City Department of Health Bureau's nutrition guide. And so they took that and she had signed up for a program. Oh, uh, wait, Long I, Nidich. Oh, it's Nidich. Really? Because Gwen, hmm, our leader pronounces it Nidich, but Nidich. Uh, Jean Nidich. Okay, so I'll pronounce that. I'll pronounce it that way. Jean Nidich. Jean. But anyway, so she had signed up for one of their programs and she just had a bunch of friends come over and she was like, okay, you, we all are having the same, you know, similar problem, you know, so um, they all just, you know, met and started talking about it. So back in the 60s, um, she, so they started out at her house, then they moved to, um, they had to move to a larger meeting hall in like 1963-ish, like in the early 60s, um, and then, you know, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So, if anybody has one of her old books, that would be so hilarious, you know, to see some of those things. But some of the things that she talked about originally in her original plan, I just want you to listen and see if they sound familiar. So remember, this is from 60 years ago. So this was 1963. This is getting ready to be 2020. So these are almost six decades old. But listen and see if any of these sound familiar. The first thing she said was that overeating is a habit. So it's just like any other habit. You can conquer it, you know, but you just get in the habit, you know, of, of overeating. I think that's probably still true today. Um, she suggested that people proceed with their weight loss one meal at a time, one meal at a time, then one day at a time, and then one week at a time. So to take little steps so that you could learn, you know, conquer one, conquer one meal, and if you can conquer one meal, then the next day, maybe you can conquer a whole day. And then after you've conquered a few days, you can conquer a whole week. Okay. So I thought that was, you know, that one was a good one. Learn to delay gratification. So how many of us 
are guilty of needing and it's getting worse it's getting worse as the years are going on that need for instant gratification you know it's like shopping too you know you see something on the shelf and you think i need that right now um you know if you can make yourself wait for it a lot of times you're not really hungry she says no crash dieting so no you know no um not eating calories, you know, not substituting 200 calories of food, you know, for 200 calories of cake, you know, no, no crash dieting. Um, try to control, the next thing was to try and control your environment. So, you know, remember we were talking about surrounding yourself with, um, you know, finding a buddy, finding a buddy or making a buddy. That's exactly what she did. That's exactly what Jean did 60 years ago. She found some buddies. She, cr she controlled her environment. She made sure that they had, you know, that they, you know, that they surrounded themselves with things that they could um, use to be successful. Learn to laugh. She was apparently quite funny. Um, I'll have to go back and find some of the, um, some of the things, you know, some of the sayings that she said, but, um, but you do, you have to learn to laugh at yourself because if we take this so seriously, you know, if we don't have fun doing this, you know, none of us are gonna make it very long. This one was kind of funny. She said, no alcohol, no skipping meals and no counting calories. So even though it's all about a calorie deficit, you know, it's all about making sure that we are in a calorie deficit, she said no alcohol. So who could do Weight Watchers today? Now, I don't, I don't drink alcohol, but in 2020, how many people would be able to stick to the Weight Watchers program if there was no alcohol and no skipping meals? That was definitely a 60 year ago, um, you know, idea. No excuses, you know, you can stick to the program no matter what. So it's getting easier every time they advance the program. It's getting easier, you know, easier and easier to stick uh, to, for excuse, to have no excuses. Um, this one I love. She says, if you stick to the plan, the plan will work. How many times have I heard somebody in one of our um, WW meetings, one of our sit down, you know, in person meetings that says, you know, it's funny if you track, you know, if you track or if you do what you're supposed to do, you know, you'll lose weight. If you honestly do what you're supposed to do, you'll lose weight. And then she wants to remind everybody that maintenance is important. So you need to be able to maintain, even if you're not at your goal weight, you know, if you, if you need to put yourself into temporary maintenance or intentional maintenance, um, you know, just to maintain, you know, you can. Um, and she says to be successful on the program, it will require your desperation, your desperation to be, your, your, to be more desperate, to be thinner, healthier, stronger than, you know, than to not be. Um, your sincerity, you gotta be honest about it, your cooperation and your patience. Okay, so these, this is the funny thing. These are the funny things. You could only eat foods that were listed on your menu plan. If the foods did not appear on the menu plan, they were off limits. You could not eat them, could not eat them. Eggs, hmm, remember if you have an egg, you have hope, remember that? Eggs, you had to limit them to four to seven per week, and you could only eat them at breakfast or lunch, never for dinner. You could never have eggs for dinner, okay? I don't really know what the, I don't know what the thought process was behind that, but you couldn't have them at dinner. Um, this was in, in the 1960s. Remember, cheese, you could only have hard cheese or pot, potted cheese. I don't know what that is. So cottage cheese or farmer's cheese. What is farmer's cheese? Um, and it's allowed only at breakfast or lunch. You could never have it for dinner. Don't know why. Does anybody know why? Fish, you had to eat a minimum of five servings of fish from group A, and we're gonna find out what group A is here in just a second, each week for lunch and dinner. Lunch and dinner, you had to. Group A fish is abalone, bass, bluefish. Do people even have this? <laughs> Bonito, butterfish, carp. Okay, fresh carp. I live in East Tennessee. We see carp a lot. We fish near carp. We feed carp at some of the restaurants that are around here. N nobody needs to be eating any carp. If it's carp like we have, mm -mm, no, 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 no. But clams, crab, croaker, whatever that is, cod, um, fin and haddie, flounder, fluke, haddock, cake, halibut, lobster. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of them. Trout, like that would be good. Tuna fish, fresh or canned. Um, shrimp and some others. Okay, so but you had to have a minimum of five group A fish and you could only have it for dinner or lunch. Uh, well, you should have it at dinner or lunch. Meat and poultry, if you, if, 
as long as, as long as you had, yeah, and Barbara knows what I mean, no way on carp. Yeah, and Teresa says we don't eat carp. No, 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 no. I would lose a lot of weight. Um, meat and poultry. If you ate your minimum number of fish for the day or for the week, if you had your minimum number of fish, then you could, uh, you could select from the group A meats or of, of poultry and group B fish, but you had to meet your minimum on the group a fish first and you could have a maximum of five weekly meat meals lunch or dinner only from group a and a maximum of three weekly meat meals lunch or dinner out of group b let's see betty says any catfish let me just go back here and look real quick i do not see catfish i do not see catfish on that list okay the group a meat and poultry is white is uh is um, white meat from chicken the, the skin removed that sounds familiar white meat turkey skin removed that sounds familiar pheasant organ meats oh liver lungs brains kidney hearts and sweetbreads what is a sweetbread i don't know what that is i don't know what that is yeah not happening for me and then group b meat and poultry and remember you had to complete all of your group a fish first before you could have this was beef frankfurters lamb dark meat or dark meat turkey group b fish i know barbara this is 60 years ago oh yeah i know barbara says i'm already confused no kidding no kidding that's why we're doing this little you know history lesson is just to remember where we came from group b fish is mackerel um pompano whatever that is fresh salmon shod and whitefish shad sorry shad and whitefish you had limited vegetables oh no carol said sweetbreads is intestines okay oh no okay so i couldn't have done this in the 60s so ladies who were doing this in the 60s my gosh my hat is off to you that is horrible 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 so how this continued, I don't even know. But anyway, they had limited, you could had limited vegetables, limited vegetables. You had to eat one a day at dinner only, at dinner only. What kind of chart did they have going on for this? I mean, did everybody have like a, like a, I don't like John has his flip chart things, you know, did everybody have a spreadsheet at home that listed all this stuff and you went through and checked it off every day? This is insane. This is crazy. This is crazy. But you had to eat at least one of these vegetables a day um, at dinner only and one portion only. Um, this, these are the limited vegetables, limited vegetables. But you it's weird. They're limited, but you had to eat one a day. And that includes artichokes, bamboo shoots, beets, Brussels sprouts, carrots, eggplant, green beans, okra, onions, parsnips, peas, pumpkin, <coughs> scallions, squash, yellow squash, tomatoes, tomato juice or turnips. Almost everything on there is now a zero point food. Almost everything on there now is a zero point food. How lucky are we? They've limited it. I can't, I can't imagine being limited to green beans, to one serving of green beans a day. Just one. The unlimited vegetables that could be eaten at any time, what they consider to be non-starchy vegetables, was asparagus, beet greens, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, cucumber, endive, escarole, bell pepper, kohlrabi, lettuce, mung bean sprouts, mushrooms, mustard greens, parsley pickles, Pimentos, radishes, rhubarb, sauerkraut, spinach, green squash, string beans, fridge style, and watercress. So yellow squash was considered a starchy vegetable, and green squash was not a starchy vegetable. Very restrictive. Condiments and seasonings, such as bouillon, herbs, and spices. Salt and pepper, paprika, vinegar, and wine vinegar, tea, coffee, horseradish, soy sauce, lemons, and limes are unlimited. Thank goodness coffee was unlimited. Um, fruit, three to five servings a day, depending on age or gender. One daily must either be an orange or a grapefruit. So every day you had to eat either orange or grapefruit as one of your fruits. The other permitted fruits were one apple, a half of a cantaloupe, that's a lot, a half of a grapefruit, um, a two inch wedge of honeydew, that's not very much. So you could have a half of a cantaloupe or a two inch wedge of, of honeydew, one orange, a fourth of a medium sized pineapple. That's a lot of pineapple. A cup of strawberries. That sounds good. 
half a cup of raspberries or blueberries, one peach or nectarine, two apricots, or a plum. The forbidden fruits, you were never to have these, never, ever, never, ever, never, never, never to have these. Bananas, cherries, watermelon, what? Grapes, I'm done. I'm already done. I eat grapes or bananas every single day. Yeah, grapes or dried fruits. The dried fruits I understand. Powdered skim milk, buttermilk, or evaporated milk must be included in your daily diet. So you had to drink some form of milk every single day, and it depended on your age and your gender, um, how much you had of that. Bread, you could eat enriched or whole grain packaged bread according to the amount you know of your age or gender, but no rolls, none, no bagels, no biscuits, no muffins, no crackers, no cereal, and no special breads. No special breads. What? Yeah, how did you all survive this? And now, you know, now the program that we're on now is looking pretty sweet, isn't it? And again, over the next couple of weeks, we will go over several, we're gonna go over several, we're gonna go over all the decades just to see how, you know, how much it's changed. Cause I just, I don't know, I thought it was interesting to see how much it had changed. So things you could not eat. So you could not eat these. They were actually called, it was called illegal, or, you know, you had legal food and illegal food. So the things that were considered um, to be, you could not drink or eat any of these things. No alcoholic beverages, including beer, wine, or whiskey. That was a funny comment to make. No avocado. What do they have against avocado? Why has avocado been on the, been on the no-no list from the beginning? It's so good for you. No bacon. I'm out. I am out. No bagels, no biscuits, no cake, no candy, no cereal, no coconuts, no cookies, crackers, cream cream cheese, no cream cheese, no donuts, no fried foods, no gefilte fish. I'm, I know I said that wrong. No gravy, no honey, no ice cream, no ices of any kind, no jam, no jello. You couldn't have jello. <laughs> no jelly, no ketchup, no mayonnaise, no muffins, nuts, oil. Oil? You couldn't have oil? How did y'all cook anything? Olives, pancakes, peanut butter, done. Count me out, count me out. Peanut butter, pies, popcorn, potato chips, pretzels, rolls, salad dressing, smoked meat or fish, soda, ginger ale, cola drinks, no soft drinks, no sugar or syrups, no waffles, and no yogurt, no yogurt. Most of you all are done. <laughs> Most of you all are already finished. Okay, so an example of a meal of a you know of a daily of a daily meal plan you know from back then um oh alicia says coconut pies made with cauliflower what what does that even mean what does that mean um a, and a sample breakfast is one egg or one ounce of hard cheese or two ounces of fish or a quarter cup of cottage cheese and one slice of enriched bread mmm mmm Wow, that sounds filling and yummy. I think I'll just skip to lunch. But remember, she said no skipping meals. An example of lunch is four ounces of fish, canned or fresh, or lean meat or poultry, or two to two thirds of a cup of cottage cheese. But remember, you could only have the meat or poultry if you had already gotten your five servings of fish, of group A fish, you could only have it then. Um, or two ounces of hard cheese, or two eggs, all the unlimited vegetables you want, and one slice of enriched bread. Yeah, and Rosie says, did every meal have to be eaten at home? It would have to be. You couldn't go to anybody else's house. <laughs> you, Yeah, and Sylvia says, I would starve. Yeah, exactly. Din example of dinner is six ounces of cooked lean meat or fish or poultry, one portion of limited vegetables, all of the unlimited vegetables that you want. But remember, at some point during the day, you had to have a total of three fruits. One of them had to be an orange or a grapefruit two cups of skim milk or buttermilk and one or or one cup of skimmed evaporated milk. Yeah, by then you're starving. So you're probably just gonna guzzle the milk maybe with an orange. Um, but at any time of the day, you can have any of the unlimited foods, you know, or beverages. So yeah, so that was a quick look back at the 1960s. Um, don't think any of us would be on the plan uh, you know, today as it was back then. Um, sounds like, um, oh yeah, actually Tag is saying what I was just thinking. Let's see, in the, in the 60s, they had very few artificial sweeteners and little low fat or no fat foods. So basically you were, you were extremely limited. So 
yeah, and Loretta, most of the bread was off the list except for one slice of enriched bread at, you know, at two of the meals. So really limited. Um, true, you did not have to count. True, you did not have to count calories. True, you did not have to um, track because it was so limited, you know, on what you could eat. Um, there are a lot of other weight loss plans right now you know, this last decade, and I'm sure coming into this next decade, that are this restrictive. So just keep in mind when, you know, when we're tracking, we're tracking everything, all of the glorious bounty of things that we are allowed to eat. So we're tracking our bananas because we're eating bananas. We're tracking our eggs because we can have eggs for supper if we want them. We're tracking our um, biscuits if, because we can have a biscuit if we, you know, if we want it. Um, so just remember all these other diets that people talk about that are so restrictive, so restrictive. Um, oh, and Debbie's talking about, yeah, Debbie's talking about um, vitamins. Um, and a lot of y'all are talking about the nasty, nasty, nasty um, diet drinks that, you know, that used to be in there. And somebody earlier was talking about making your own ketchup because you weren't allowed to have, because ketchup wasn't one of the okay, you know, condiments to have. So... That was a quick look back at the 1960s. This is a six decade um, plan in progress. Um, I think it's still gonna be fun to go back and look, you know, just like it's fun to look at old pictures and just go, oh, that was so cute. You know, in the 1950s and 60s, you know, men would come home and their wives would be wearing a little apron and a bow and her hair, you know, and just have everything so-so. And the kids would be quietly, you know, sitting there waiting, you know, for Papa to come home and get to put his slippers and his pipe in his mouth. You know, it's fun to look back at stuff like that. So I think this is going to be fun. I hope you'll join me for the next couple of weeks because um, I really do think it's going to be fun to look back, you know, just to look back and see, you know, and see where we came from. And I'm hoping by the end of, by the, end of the couple of weeks that we can, um, you know, that we can enjoy and appreciate you know the programs that we have now so anyway we're going to do that for the next couple of weeks um i think it's going to be super fun then after that couple of weeks super bowl sunday we will be all things um ww friendly ww smart um you know snacks i do highly recommend that everybody go try to make winstar karen's buffalo dip i'm telling you get some practice in get some practice in for the super bowl you are going to want to use that for all of your parties, all of your, you know, whatever. It's one point, blue, green, and purple. It was okay. I mean, it was great. It was good with the celery. It was awesome with the tortilla scoops. I could have twice as many scoops because it was only one, you know, point, blue, green, and purple. But anyway, I, um, I highly recommend everybody to go check out that recipe. It's on ifyouhaveanegg.com. I'm going to let you all go. Um, the... Next week, we are gonna visit two more decades. I think we'll try to do the 70s and 80s next week. Um, I think it's gonna be fun, you know, looking at, um, you know, looking at the different plans. <clears throat> if anybody has any pictures, if you have any pictures or any um, program material, I would love for you to share it so that we can, um, so that we can look at it. I'd love to see, you know, cause we were talking about the old sliders and things. Um, and for people who haven't seen that, I just think it would be a hilarious, you know, a hilarious look back on those. Um, but. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will join us again next week. I hope you will do your homework. So don't forget, if you're watching this later on YouTube, the next video is right here. And we have, um, you can subscribe. If you subscribe on YouTube, please remember to click the little bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up, when this week's video gets posted. And over here, you can order a spread shirt. Thank you to everybody that was here tonight. Remember to tell Casey happy 26th birthday tomorrow and remember to wish Alyssa a happy second birthday on Tuesday. Everybody have a great new year. Um, I will talk to you at some point in between now and then, but happy new year and I will see you again in 2020. Happy new year, everybody. See you later.